from this expression. That means if k, value of k is large, then reaction is shifted towards forward direction. That's what information is given from this expression. And that's why we define k like this. That if concentration of C and D are large, this expression is large. Because if C and D are large, A and B will be small. Because C and D, C and D is being formed from A and B. Initially, there was only A and B. When they started reacting, they start to form C and D. Fine? That's how reaction went. So that's why we have defined K like this. So that when C and D are large, that means C and D are formed more. And A and B are left out less. A and B are less. Then this fraction is large. And that's why if K is large, then we say that the reaction has more tendency to go in forward direction. This much information is suffi sufficient for us for now. Now, there's expression Q also defined in which the expression is same. The difference being the concentration is any concentration. The concentration is not the concentration at equilibrium. For example, suppose the reaction has not begun yet. There is also only A and B and no C and D. So concentration of C and D are zero. So Q will be zero. Suppose the equilibrium constant reaction forcefully I have completed to 100%. That means no A and B are left out. So A and B will be zero. So Q will be infinite. So this Q is the same expression, but it is at any general point. This K is the expression in which we are looking at the equilibrium state. So concentration terms are that of equilibrium state. These are any general concentration terms. That's the difference. So K is a special case of Q. Fine? Fine. Now I'm giving you one more information. If Q is less than K, then reactions shift towards K. That means if Q is less, that means C and D are very less. And C and D will be formed more. And then reaction will move towards equilibrium and then it will stop because reaction stops at equilibrium. So if C and D are less, that means this C and D are yet to be increased. That means reaction will move forward. Fine. So if Q by K is less than 1, then reaction is moving forward. Opposite will be true if C and D are more, then, uh, then C and D have to decrease because equilibrium always have to be achieved from both the sides, whether you have taken A and B or you have taken C and D. Because at equilibrium, the entropy is maximum as we have seen and the graph is like this. So either if you are at this position A or if you are at this position B, from both the side, you will reach to the peak. because. Either if you if you are at A, you will be reaching towards the peak, entropy will be increasing. If you are at B, you will re be reaching towards the peak and entropy will be increasing. So if you are beginning with A plus B or you are beginning plus C and D, C plus D, you always have to reach here. Fine. So if Q has been increased more than K, the reaction will come back and come to this peak. If Q is less than K, the reaction will move forward and come to this peak. So if Q by K is less than 1, then reaction is going forward. If Q by K is greater than 1, then reaction is moving backward. Alright? And if Q by K is equal to 1, that means reaction is at equilibrium. So reaction will not occur anymore. Fine? Now let's relate this information with the information that we know from the expression of delta G. If delta G is negative, then the reaction is spontaneous. And this information is furnished by if Q by K is Q by K is less than 1, then the reaction is going to go in forward direction. Fine. If delta G is greater than 0, then the reaction is non-spontaneous. That means if Q by K is greater than 1. If delta G is equal to 0, we have discussed, then the reaction will be at equilibrium. And that is when Q by K is equal to 1. When Q by K is equal to 1, delta G is 0. Now, somehow if we want to relate this Q by K as equal to, I mean, if you have to relate this Q by K with delta G, then somehow there has to be a log or ln term in Q by K. If delta G is on one side and there will be other constants suppose, 
then if q by k is equal to 1 and ln 1 or log 1 is 1 log 1 is 0 so when q by k is 1 delta g is 0 so when q by k is 1 right hand side is 0 and left hand side is also 0 so this equality will hold fine so this is the idea and experimentally it has been seen that the constant is rt and this is the relation because q and k gives you the information of the direction of reaction and delta g also gives you the information about the direction of reaction that's why they are related like this now we can work more on this uh, uh, before closing i'll just quickly tell you we can just proceed ahead a little bit and delta g is equal to rt ln q minus rt ln k fine now at equilibrium at equilibrium uh, if you are looking at then i can write it as delta g is equal to rt ln q plus delta g naught because delta g naught is at standard condition at standard condition concentration terms have are one molar and the pressure if there's gases in the expression then that they are at one atm pressure so if you have c expressions like this then all are going to be one 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 if they are if they, they, they are in solution the concentration term is going to be one if they are gases then the pressure term is going to be one so this whole thing is one into one in by one into one whole thing is going to be one so q is going to be one so this q is going to be one so ln q is going to be zero so this expression is going to be zero and at equilibrium we are going to have delta g naught so delta g naught uh, at standard condition i'm sorry at standard condition at standard condition they are going to be one so delta g naught which is at standard condition will be equal to minus rt ln q because at standard condition q is going to be zero so delta g naught is equal to minus rt ln q so now we can replace minus rt ln q as minus as delta g naught so this expression if you if you if you bring delta g naught on left hand side then this delta g will be equal to delta g naught plus rt ln q this is the expression that we must know and this expression will be utilized then we can solve uh, more numericals on this and this expression will be revisited in the chapter of chemical equilibrium and will have more detailed discussion there itself.